Welcome to church. We come for one purpose, for he is among us. The name above all names, for it's about him and always has been. Today, you may be lonely or broken or bound in chains and never know the only name, but today changes everything. He is the miracle worker, the chain breaker, the taker of our sin, the name above all names, for he is the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the Alpha, the Omega. He makes our hearts sing. He's the first and the last. He's the one who sends my path to new hope. He's the beginning of new life, the end of darkness and despair, and today we worship him. Sing it out. In all, all of this for your glory. And all, all of this for your glory. And all, all of this for your glory. for your glory Whoa. and all, all of this for your glory and all, all of this for your glory no longer I who live now Jesus lives in me for I was dead See the light. Thank you for joining us online. Thank you for everybody who's here. 
If you're new with us, we're obviously going to do a few songs up front, but then we're going to have a message, and we have a new series, and uh, I think you're gonna, it's, it's going to be great. Church at the movies, it's going to be a lot of fun. But right now, we're going to sing about a king who is coming, and he's coming soon. And as we worship and as we lift him up, he's going to be in this place. So let's sing this song. Come on, here we go. upon King Jesus Let every tribe and tongue prepare the way Let every heart be filled with expectation Because the King is coming Yeah, the King is coming Come on, lift up Open the doors up Come let the light in People get ready Open the doors up, come let the light in, people get ready, get ready to worship him. Come on, we're singing, hey, we're singing,
this to me. I count on one thing. I count on one thing. The same God who never fails. He will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God is never late. He's working all things out. He's working all things out. Oh yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Oh yes, I will. Sing that again. I count. I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now. You know waiting. The same God is never late. He's working all things out. You're working all. tonight, right church? Hey, as you're being seated, make sure to grab the communion supplies on the seat on the row in front of you. And for, if you're watching from home, make sure to go get those communion supplies. We would love for you to participate with us in this. Uh, man, as uh, my name is Brad Pesnell. I'm the life groups and men's pastor here. And uh, you know, every week we do communion and we, we take this moment out of our service uh, to stop and we take a little piece of bread and we are reminded of the body of Jesus Christ. Why is that important? Why do we do that? We do it to remember that God entered this world as the person of Jesus Christ to pay for our sins so that he could have relationship with us. He wanted to be personal with us, but there was something that st stood in the way. It was sin. Sin isolated us from God. God entered this world to make sure 
that we could have relationship with him. And it cost him a great thing. We take juice and we're reminded that it cost him everything. He gave his life so that we could have relationship with him. If you're new with us and you're not yet a follower of Jesus, please don't feel obligated uh, to take those elements with us. But this is something we do as believers to remind ourselves, to remember that we, that, that that message changes everything we do in life. It centers the way we live our lives. Uh, if, if you're new with us, please like, just know that we have some prompts on the screen that will help guide you through this time, and uh, it can lead you through prayer. And man, as we do this, I just want to remind us, uh, as we're here today, I just want to remind us that wherever we are, it is, in, it is so important for us to stop and not go through all the motions, not pretend, not to put on a face, but it's important for us in this moment to stop and just say yes to God. Do whatever you want to do in my life. I surrender because you're God. Let's pray and say yes to God. Father, we love you and we just want to say thank you for all that you have done for us. We believe who you say you are. And God, today we say yes to you and we invite you to do whatever you want to do. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. My name's Christine Elledge. I have been on staff here at Valley Real Life for about a year and a half, but I've also been a part of women's, women's ministry leadership for about the past couple years um, for Wednesday morning Bible study. And I have to say, I so appreciate our child care workers. I don't know if many of you know, yeah, let's give them props, seriously. I don't know if you guys are aware of the various ministries that meet at our building throughout the week. And there are many participants that just wouldn't be able to attend if we didn't have childcare provided. And it's because of your generous giving and donations that make it possible for those parents and those families to be able to just connect with others and grow in their relationship with Christ. There are so many ways that you can give. There are boxes on your way out of the auditorium. And you can also go to vrl.church slash give or... Right behind me is this really schnazzy QR code. If you just grab your phone and open up your camera app and point it at the screen, the QR code will pop up a little link that will actually direct you right to our giving page if you just click on that link. Also, if you have connection cards on the seats next to you, please fill those out. Let us know you were here. And also, if you have any prayer requests, we love to be praying for you. As a staff and elders, we gather every Monday and we go over every single one of those prayer requests. If you're online with us, vrl.church slash prayer. Now you guys are in for a seriously great treat. We are beginning this new series at the movies, which is so fun. We are having a special 
online experience with special guests because what we have showing in our auditorium can only be shown in person. So if you are local and you've been watching online, come in. We invite you just to come in and join us because you're going to get a completely different experience here. But our special guests online, you will have so much fun watching them. Let's go ahead and get things kicked off. Hey, my name is Jeremy, and I want to invite you to Family Feast. Man, you can see it's going on behind me right now, and it's a lot of fun. We got a lot of food, a lot of people, and what a way for everyone to connect. We do this every Thursday night all the way through July. It's at 5.30 p.m. before service, and heck, dinner's on us. So come on down. You know what, if you're camping for the weekend, if you're out of town for the weekend and won't be able to catch service on Sunday, this is the place to be on Thursday. Invite a neighbor, invite a coworker, invite any friend to come on down. Dinner's on us. We hope to see you here. Hey Valley Real Life, my name is Zach Summers. I am our guest experience lead here at the Barker Campus, which essentially just means that I oversee a couple volunteer teams of anybody who smiles and or serves coffee. Uh, with me today, I am joined with... Why? I'm Cammie Moody. I uh, also work here at Valley Real Life. I work as the administrative assistant to our groups team. So I work with the men's ministry, women's ministry, all of our life groups um, online. I kind of get to put my hand in a lot of different areas and it's fun. So I'm happy to be here. Thanks yes. for having us. If you come on site for some of the family feasts during the summer, Cammie's the one who controls all of the burgers. All of the burgers <laughs> are in Cammie's hands. It's fun. It's a, it's a good fun yeah. summer summer event. So yeah. we're so glad you guys are here. Thank you for joining us. Let's get into it. Zach. Yes, let's yeah. get into it. Uh, hey, today we're going to be talking about a really fun topic, uh, everybody's favorite topic, surrender. <laughs> uh, and we wanted to kind of mix it up a little bit. And so if you've ever been on YouTube and seen uh, one of those like uh, wired autocomplete interviews or something like that, that's what we're going to be doing. So we have Google. We've Googled all the all of your questions and answering <laughs> answers about surrender. And so this is what Google, uh, i.e. our brains, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, have come up with about what are some really uh, just casual, important, uh, common questions about surrender uh, in regards to our faith that um, just commonly asked. And how can yeah. we, you know, maybe provide some answers, uh, just give you some of our experience of what it looks like to uh, surrender throughout faith in, in our lives. And so we're really mm -hmm. excited to uh, be sharing with you. So first question. First question. Let's see. Let's see. Can we rip it off? Why should we surrender to God? Why should we surrender to God? Well, that's a great question, Cammie. Uh-huh. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I want to actually, uh, before we even get into some of these answers, I want to jump into a, a passage of scripture, which I think is going to help us uh, show us what how Jesus wants us to surrender, uh, you know, our lives. Mm -hmm. And it's actually when he called the disciples to surrender for the first time. So this is going to be out of Luke 5. So if you have your Bibles with you, uh, if, if you can, if you can get to Luke 5, do that. I think the, the scripture will also be on the screen here. But Luke 5, 1 through 11 says this. One day, as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, uh, its owner, to push it out into the water. So he sat in the boat and he taught the crowds from there. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Now go out where it's deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Master, Simon replied, we've worked hard all night and we didn't catch a darn near thing. I, I think he said that. Uh, <laughs> but if you say so, I love that line. But if you say so, I'll let down the nets again. Hmm. And this time their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. A shout for, uh, they shouted for help uh, and they brought their partners in from the other boat. And soon both of the boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. That's insane. Hmm. When Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and he said, Oh Lord, please leave me, and I, I am such a sinful man. For he was awestruck by the number of fish that he had caught, as, uh, as were the others with him. And so his partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also amazed. But Jesus replied to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for people. And as soon as they landed, they left everything and they followed Jesus. 
Man, mm. um, I love uh, this this first parable. Uh, you know, because we just see the illustration of Jesus calling his disciples. Yeah. And the idea, I think, when we when we follow Jesus is. The, the cost of following Jesus or, or what it means to follow Jesus is essentially to be surrendered to Jesus. Being a disciple is all about surrender. And so that's what I want us to kind of build this foundation of surrender around is just this idea that if, we're, if we are called uh, to Jesus, if we're called to be in relationship with him, that call is a call to surrender. It's a call to give up our own natural instincts. Hmm. It's a call to give up our lives. Literally, in, in this case, the the uh, the disciples were giving up their livelihood. They mm-hmm. were fishermen. They were really good at what they were doing. Uh, and they transitioned to just following Jesus. In Matthew, it actually, Jesus, in this same, uh, kind of same story, but he says it in, and it says it in a different way. He looks at the disciples and says, follow me, uh, come and follow me. I will make you fishers of men. Hmm. And just that idea of they're now leaving their lives behind and everything they knew, everything they trusted, and they're now trusting in Jesus and Jesus alone. Hmm. And you even see that in the way that Peter, um, you know, answered, you know, because you say so. Uh, and I right. just think that's such a cool line. Yep. I, mean, I mean, what what if we had a heart of just doing whatever Jesus asked us? Not because necessarily, just like Peter, he probably didn't think it was going to work. Right. But he just said, because you say so, I'll let down my nets. And so why should we surrender to God? Well, it's because it's what Jesus calls us to. It's because what he it, said so. It's because he yeah. says so. And it and because mm-hmm. that's that is the call of of being a disciple. Absolutely. Yeah. That's point blank, guys. Let's find out question number two. Second most searched is what does surrender look like practically? Mm-hmm. So this is a great question of, okay, so we're supposed to surrender cool story, but how, Mm -hmm. right? It's kind of that who, what, when, where, how, why type of thing. So practically the first thing when you're kind of figuring out the idea of surrender is prayer. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, it's prayer. Are you praying about it? Have you prayed, hey God, is there something you want me to surrender? Or, hey, I want to surrender this. Like, I want to surrender my financials. I want to surrender my relationship. I want to surrender this job. I want to surrender this decision. Mm-hmm. Um, are you asking God about it? You know, you you need to have that relationship with him where you're just having those conversations and you're, you're speaking to him. You know that he's listening. And are you allowing the spirit to speak in? Are you allowing the spirit to to give you that guidance, those mm-hmm. answers to, to light that path yeah. for you, right? It, it all starts with prayer. So mm-hmm. if you are looking to surrender or asking, what does it mean to do that? And how do I take that first step? My advice and what I do is just pray about it. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. and I, I think that's, that's such a practical sign of, you know, am I surrendering this thing? Well, how often am I praying about it? Yeah. You know, am I surrendering my life to Jesus? Well, how often are you praying about it? Mm -hmm. Because in reality, if you're not praying about it, you're probably not surrendering it. Right. Because what's interesting is it's not necessarily about the action of prayer, because I believe prayer is a byproduct of Mm -hmm. surrender. So let it be more of a sign than like this is the action of it. Because I think it's all about our heart and our mindsets that go into uh, just surrendering to God. And, and, you know, as much as we want it to be a practical, here's all of the steps of how to surrender to Jesus, it's 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 not like that. Sure. Um, and yeah, surrender is more of like a, a posture, um, mm-hmm. a, an emotion. It's it's very emotionally driven, right? And if you if you have your mind set on something, on um, on committing to something, it's freeing. To surrender mm-hmm. something is very freeing. Um, and I think we'll go into that a little bit later too. Um, but it's really just releasing and, and giving something back to God and reminding yourself, this is in your hands. It is about me and it is involving me, but this is you. So I'm going to do this with you and how you want it to be done. So let's kind of work together in that relationship, that partnership. Yeah. Yeah. And part of it is, you know, we're not the disciples. At least I'm not. I I, I think Zacchaeus (laughs) is mentioned somewhere in here, but that's not me. That's not you. Um, And so we don't have a physical relationship with Jesus. Correct. And so the disciples were able to surrender to Jesus because they, they were in relationship with him. Mm-hmm. And we do get to be in relationship with him. But our, our main exposure to Jesus is is the Bible. Right. And so when it looks like practically surrendering to Jesus, it's prayer, but it's also 
getting into scripture. It's also reading your Bibles. Because like, yep. you know, uh, Cami and her husband, Zach, not me, uh, <laughs> different guy, um, is uh, they have a, a wonderful and a beautiful marriage. Mm, and Cami can uh, basically assume any response that Zach would have. If I were to run up to Zach and ask him to do something, uh, Cami would be like, oh, I bet he would probably say this or this or this. Mm -hmm. And that's because she knows him really, really well. Well, in that same way, when we read scripture, we can know Jesus really, really well. Yeah. And we can kind of assume what he would call us to do, mm -hmm. how he would call us to yeah. surrender. And I think that's really important as well. Yeah, there's that time element with it too. Yep. Um, all right. Next question. Question number three. What if nothing good is coming from my surrender? <laughs> um, guys, that's a tough one. Um, yeah. This is, the, <laughs> again, this is that posture, right? That, that attitude that you're coming with surrender. Um, mm -hmm. God never said that life would be easy. Um, he never said that it would be, you know, oh, just do these things and you'll be fine. Um, it's a journey and it's very individual, right? Everyone's journey and everyone's life is different in this beautiful, unique way. Um, and if you find yourself asking, okay, what good is going to come from this? Thinking like future tense, or if you're saying, hey, I've surrendered, mm. but I don't see any good coming from it. That's something that you need to recognize and internalize and say, oh, okay, this is how I'm feeling inside. And this is me trying mm -hmm. to take yeah. control. Yeah. That is a control thing. And that is where maybe you need to accept that you're not fully surrendering, mm. right? Or maybe you're just in those like beginning steps, right? So good isn't supposed, there's a good that we identify as good and there's that capital G, good from God type of good. And they don't always align the way we want them to. Mm -hmm. So again, reflect, be in scripture, learn those stories, you know, learn how Jesus spoke, how he thought, how he processed through things. Mm -hmm. um, and just accept that sometimes the good that you're wanting is in the future and you have to wait for it. You know, good mm -hmm. things come to those, to those who wait. Yeah. So um, take that as a, a flag of, hmm, maybe I need to reassess mm -hmm. the situation. And um, again, be, be in prayer more, be more in scripture, ask advice from others, um, you know, come see one of our pastors, a counselor, yeah. a good friend, um, and just be honest with that. I and mean, the more honest and open you are, the more answers um, you're going to get. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that question of what if nothing good is coming from my surrender? Um, I, I, I just hit it with, you know, good by whose definition, mm -hmm. right? Sure. Um, because my definition of good is very different than God's definition of good. Uh, you know, my definition of good is that I get to eat ice cream every night <laughs> um, and I get to enjoy all the pleasures of this world and everything like that, mm -hmm. where ultimately that's, that's, that's not good sure. for me, right? Sure. And so it, it really takes me kind of to John 10, 10, though, where um, it says that the, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I, Jesus, have come so that you may have life and life abundantly. Hmm. And so when I think about this question, I also think about this idea of kind of where our trust is, and this is tied in really deeply with surrender. Uh, what are you putting your surrender and trust in? Because just like the disciples, they didn't trust that everything was going to turn out good. Mm -hmm. Again, Peter didn't put his nets into the water because he thought it was going to work. He didn't think it was going to be good. But he, he looked at him and said, you know, Jesus, because you say so, because mm -hmm. I trust you, I will do this. And so uh, from that, when we think about surrender in our lives and our circumstances and all these other things, it's less about like, Jesus, I trust you to make it good. But just the phrase of Jesus, I just, I trust you. And from that, he promises he will make it good. Yeah. Romans 8, 28 says that God works all things for good mm -hmm. for those who are called according to his purposes. Essentially, all things for good for those who are surrendered to him. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, then he changes our hearts. Uh, he changes the circumstance. And, and he's a lot more powerful There's and good. a lot good. of refining that yeah. happens within there. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, and again, it's personal to each person's journey. So mm -hmm. if you hear someone else's story of how they surrendered this to God, it's gonna you can surrender the exact same situation or scenario, but it's going to be different, yeah. right? It's going to be individualized. Um, and I, I hope that that gives you guys that freedom and that relief of, oh, okay, so it doesn't have to, this isn't the only way that it needs yeah. to be, right? Like there's there's good that's gonna come from everything and it might be good for someone else, 
your sacrifice or what you're surrendering. Um, you just have to have that big picture of like, it is good according to God's vision. And we are just here for that, right? Yeah. And we get to be a part of that. And whether that's good, that's internalized to you and in front of you and in, in a tangible way, cool, but that might not be what it is. And that should not be our driver. Yeah. Yeah, yep. that shouldn't be the factor. Sweet. All right, number four, I think Question. it is. Yeah, what do we got? How do I know that I'm actually surrendering to God? Oh, I like that question. How do I know? Hmm, good shot. Thanks, Google. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Google. <laughs> how do I know that I'm actually surrendering to God? Um, this one, this is where I wish I could give you a practical yeah. one, two, three step answer. Yeah. Uh, but if I'm honest and I look in my life, a lot of times it's like, it's kind of a gut instinct. Yep. I feel like, you know, I, I would, I say that it's like, the, it's the Holy Spirit working in me, but it's, it's more of, man, I, I really feel inclined to go this way as opposed to this way. Um, I've kind of heard it say like, you know, how do I know I'm following God and all these things? And I wish God would just give me the right answers and the right direction and all those things. And like, it's not like following Jesus. He gives us directions. Like it's not a GPS where he goes this way and this way. I think of it as more like a compass. Mm -hmm. um, and I've kind of always said, like, I feel like I always have a true north. I know that I should go that way. And I don't know what kind of terrain is that way. Sure. I don't know if I'm going to have to kind of go around a mountain or if I'm going to have to go into a valley or swim for a little bit or whatever that may be. But I know where north is and I and I know I need to keep making my way yeah. that way. So it really yeah. is more of a gut instinct in that. But just like I said earlier... Cammie can assume what her husband is going to say in a, in a certain scenario mm -hmm. or, or thing. And so in the same way, if I read my Bible, if I, if I read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and if I get to know the words and lifestyle and character of Jesus, I can assume uh, what he would want me to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and it should never contradict the Bible. Please hear that. Sure. Don't, yeah. don't just go off and, and use your gut instinct and say that God called me to do it. Um, but get to, when you get to know Jesus and when you allow his words and, and his life to transform you, uh, he will clearly guide you yeah. um, in, in a lot of circumstances. Sometimes things aren't as clear, unfortunately. Um, but in my mind, like as long as you're not like hurting people and, sure. and contradicting <laughs> the Bible, I think God is happy with you. Mm -hmm. As long as you are focused on surrendering to him and, and just kind of following him as best as you can, I think, I think God's happy, uh, and and I think from that you can rest assured that you are fully known, that you are fully loved by a God who is with you there for every step. Who He doesn't want to give you too much of the direction, mm -hmm. but He just wants you to walk with Him and follow Him. You know, the disciples they were with Jesus for for three years, and this was the this story from Luke five is the beginning of that, and they didn't know where they were going. They didn't know the end of the road. They just knew that they saw Jesus. And they wanted to follow him and trust him no matter what came. He walked, they walked by faith, not by sight, mm -hmm. right? Not knowing what it is later. And that's, that's okay. Yeah. You know, and again, there's freedom in that. There's freedom in not knowing things in the future. And I'm someone who comes from, I like to know the steps that I have ahead of me. I know, like to know <laughs> what can I predict? Okay, what could an outcome yeah. be? I, I like to know that and to think about that. And God's really worked in me to be like, okay, sometimes yes. But most often, no. And I have mm -hmm. to sit here and be faithful. Yeah. And I need to have that trust and that confidence in God and where he is leading me and where yeah. he's leading my family. Um, and to just be appreciative that I have a God who who wants to take that time into mm -hmm. me. And the the idea of surrendering all of that to him at times can be really challenging, yeah. but ultimately it's just freeing and it's it's walking by faith yeah. and being like, okay, let's go with it. You know, yeah. it's that Holy Spirit relationship and um, learning to hear that spirit. And we just did a, a series on the Holy Spirit and all those different details. You know, if you haven't seen that, no, yeah, go back, go back and take a look at it. There's so much mm -hmm. and we go real deep, um, real practical, um, but there is, the Holy Spirit is truly a gift. Yeah. And it's it's that compass that you're referring yeah. to. Well, and even beyond that, like I look at the disciples and I look at this story and I even look at my life and it feels like every, you know, the question, how do I know that I'm actually surrendering to God? It's it's more often uh, God calling me to do something that is unnatural 
uh, uncommon, uncomfortable, and, mm-hmm. and, and outside of my comfort zone. Uncomfortable, for sure. yeah. You know, and just that idea of if I'm following Jesus, he's more than likely going to ask me to do difficult things mm-hmm. um, and, and things that I wouldn't normally choose to do. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm grinding against my natural instincts to follow Jesus sometimes. Mm-hmm. And so if you're trying to ask yourself, man, am I really following God? Well, I'd, I can maybe ask yourself, I don't think it applies in every circumstance, but mostly, most of them, you know, am I doing this out of comfort or am I doing this out of surrender? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and really evaluate your position of are you living in comfort or are you living in surrender? Yep. I would even interchange that comfort word with convenience, Ooh. right? Ooh. Um, and again, everyone's journey is unique and different. And um, if you have a different word that I mean comfort, convenience, convenience. If, there, if there's another C word, Prime. how great would that be? Okay. <laughs> Let's bring it back in, guys. Huh? <laughs> but if you have a different word, like, share that. You know, like let us yeah. know what that is, because um, it, it's it's again, it's so freeing to just be open and honest with one another. Mm-hmm. And this is such a safe environment, yeah. and um, conversations are are key. You know, yeah. conversations are so important, and um, we want to be very transparent and, and honest in, in those moments yeah. to allow to set an example for you guys. You know, mm-hmm. so yeah. all right, next one. Boop. Mm-hmm. What, what is an example of surrendering from your life? Oh, Google, you're getting kind of personal. Jeez, wow. Ooh. How dare you? How dare you? Zach, can I take this one? Yeah, you know, um, Cammie, you're right. You know, we really do want to try and be vulnerable and, and authentic as mu- as best we can, really. You yeah. Know? And so this kind of goes to um, actually about almost two years, uh, just uh, about two years ago, my mother passed away, actually, mm-hmm. and she was really young. Uh, and, uh, she, um, she was an alcoholic and so her, it was her, it was her mm-hmm. liver, yeah. unfortunately. And I had to kind of manage everything. You know, she didn't have anything. She didn't have a will. She didn't really oh, have anything yeah. to go on. She kind of had a lot of debt. She kind of just made a lot of really difficult choices and it, it just broke my heart because she was really looking for love in all the wrong oh. places, you know? And I was just like, man, I wish she would have just grabbed onto Jesus. But in that, in those moments, um, you know, I, I remember having to handle the funeral, but then going down and having to move into her house for like a month. And hmm. my brother and his son, uh, my nephew had, had kind of lived with them, uh, lived with her in that house. And so we were kind of tidying up and, and selling things. And, and I was trying to do things to the best of my ability, meeting with lawyers, just and just such a, a chaotic season of my life where I just want the best for my family at this yeah. point. Um, and I just had to surrender every single day to Jesus to say like, Lord, I do not know what the best decision to make is. Hmm. And maybe you're in a similar situation. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe somebody didn't die, but maybe you are in a situation where you just don't know what the best choice is. Yeah. And you're you're clueless like, like me. And I just, I had no idea what I was doing. And I was so... I was, I felt like I was sinking and drowning and everything was just going way above my head. But there's something about just surrendering to Jesus every day and every moment to say, you know what, I don't know what the best thing to do is, um, Mm -hmm. but I'm going to surrender Jesus to you no matter what and trust that you're going to be with me in the midst of this. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, again, you know, scripture never says life's going to be easy or comfortable or convenient. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, But it's real, you know, and it's something that if we lean on our father for that help and that guidance, he's going to provide, he's going to provide. And I think that was a big Mm -hmm. moment for you to just practice that. Right. And sometimes it's easy to say, you know, surrender, do this, but when you're practicing it, it's very different, which gets into Google's last question, last question, (laughs) which is what area of my life does God want me to surrender? to him. Mm. Now, this is a question for you guys. We want you Mm. to think about it, to be in prayer, to be in scripture, Um, really dive into this. And what does this next step mean for you? If you're feeling comfortable, share it, share it here online, share it with your Mm. life group, share it with a friend, whatever that might be. Um, But thank you guys for being here. Mm. I I so appreciate us being able to share with you guys, um, share with you a little bit what's on our heart and what um, the spirit encouraged us to share with you. Yeah. You yeah. know, and, and I would hope that you come away with this, um, 
you know, similar, uh, just with both and I came here, we were, we were just talking about surrender and just this, this, this quiet confidence that we can have in Jesus to know that, man, I'm not going to have all of the answers or all of the directions, mm-hmm. but I'm going to have trust that everything's, everything's going to be okay. Yeah. And, uh, my Jesus loves me. Yeah. Uh, and he's there with us in the middle of the storm and on the mountaintops when things are going really well as yeah. well. So, uh, Cammie, will you pray for us? I would be uh, honored and, uh, to pray. Yeah. Um, so let's join together, guys. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment, um, for this time that you allowed Zach and myself to share our hearts, God, to share what the Spirit's been um, working through us, encouraging us. Um, God, I just pray that this spoke to spoke to someone on any kind of level, Jesus, that it would be an encouragement and um, the the words freedom and surrender and togetherness and unity and scripture, God, that those would be words that um, are laid in front of everyone watching, God, and that this would be shared with others. And um, God, maybe the concept of surrendering to you, um, one, wouldn't sound so scary, um, mm-hmm. would sound so tangible, um, God, and that it would just be practiced. Yes. Let us be uh, a community together. Let us be brothers and sisters that encourage one another and support one another. Let us be accountable to one another. God, I thank you for this church. I thank you for Valley Real Life. I thank you for everyone who's um, joined in today and taken the time to um, learn a little bit more about you and each other um, as friends and as a church family. Uh, Jesus, we love you. We pray for our week and our day. Um, We thank you for our future. We pray for um, a lot of surrendering and a lot of good Mm -hmm. to come from that. Jesus, we love you so much, and it's in your sweet name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, I searched the world But it couldn't fill me A man's empty praise And treasures that fade Are never enough That you came along And you put me back together And every desire is now satisfied here in love. Come on, church, can we sing together? There's nothing like our God. Oh, there's none better than you. There's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing, nothing is better.
Hey guys, let's celebrate some baptisms and have a seat. Amen.